So while disaccharides are when we had two sugars linked together, polysaccharides are when we have three or more sugars linked together. So for these, we're not going to look um, too much at the detailed chemistry of like how they're formed and, and whatnot, but more in terms of their more general properties. So uh, a couple that you need to know. One is going to be cellulose. So cellulose is going to be uh, a primary polysaccharide in a lot of plants. Um, so grass, the reason the grass you know, stands upright is because it has this rigid structure to it, which is primarily due to cellulose. And same thing with wood and uh, plant stems and things of that nature. So cellulose gives it that, um, that particular firm structure. So humans, we aren't able to digest cellulose. So whereas something like a termite can make a living eating wood and digesting it and getting energy from it, humans, on the other hand, don't have an, the enzyme that's able to break down cellulose. And that specific enzyme is called beta-glycosidase. Um, that's really interesting. That, the really interesting thing about that is the beta part of that. Um, beta-glycosidase and alpha-glycosidase are two different enzymes. And the only difference is the type of glycosidic linkage and alpha or beta glycosidic linkage that links together the sugars. Um, as humans, we do have alpha glycosidase and we can break down uh, whenever there's glucoses linked together through alpha glycosidic bonds, but not when they're linked together by beta glycosidic bonds. So that makes cellulose uh, in what we refer to as insoluble fiber. Because we're not able to digest it, it basically adds bulk to our waste to help eliminate it more easily. And you can see here the linkage between a bunch of celluloses. And notice that if I were to circle kind of one of these glycosidic linkages starting at C1, you know, the initial carbon on the one on the left, the H is down, the O is pointing up, which would make it kind of a beta glycosidic linkage. All right, so again, cellulose has beta-glycosidic linkages, which us as humans, we're not able to uh, break down. Now, compare that to starch. Starch is made out of alpha-glycosidic linkages, right? So alpha-glycosidic linkages, the same general idea. Here's our glycosidic linkage, but notice this time the H is up. The O is pointing down, which makes it an alpha-glycosidic linkage. So starch... This type of molecule is present in corn, rice, wheat, potatoes. Um, there's actually two different types. There's amylose, which is what we're looking at here, which is a linear form. On the next slide, we'll look at amylopectin, which is basically the same idea, except it's branched a little bit. Um, we'll look at what that means whenever we look at that structure. Um, but because of these alpha-glycosidic linkages, as humans, we have alpha-glycosidase, which is able to break these down. So whenever we eat foods with this type of starch, we're able to break it down and derive kind of nutritional uh, calories and, uh, and stuff from that. Okay, so amylopectin, as I mentioned before, is the branched form of this starch. And what it means when it's branched is down here we have kind of that initial linear chain which was the exact same thing as kind of um, what was on the previous slide, right? So the amylose kind of was that linear form. But then what happens when some polysaccharides is there are branch points. In other words, kind of where the blue arrow is pointing, it says two polysaccharide chains are connected at a branch point along one chain. Um, where you have that branching occurs, it allows it to kind of continue on down this way where I just drew that red line and it can go on and on and on. And this allows us to store these molecules better instead of having one super long stringy molecule. These branch points allow us to have basically more ends of a molecule. The more ends we have, the more readily we're able to break them down to get energy from later. later. So that's kind of one of the benefits of kind of amylopectin. Now, um, so again, amylose and amylopectin are very similar. Their glucose is linked repeatedly through alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic linkages. Amylopectin is the branched ones. Um, and as humans, we can break down both of these. All right, so glycogen is probably the most um, important storage sugar for us as humans. Um, we have, we store uh, 
glucose in the form of glycogen, mainly in the liver and muscle cells, in the form of this glycogen. So glycogen is a very highly branched form, very similar to that amylopectin we looked at. Um, it's almost to where glycogen forms these kind of like balls full of glucose that have you know, thousands of ends on them because of all these different branch points. It's like looking at a really puffy tree that has a whole lot of branches. And imagine you can go there and trim off the end of the branches, but you can't trim the trunk. So the more ends of the branches we have, the more energy we can get because each of those ends of the branches of glycogen, whenever we trim it, we can get glucose, which we can then um, use for energy. So again, we uh, hydrolyze the glucose off the end of the glycogen for energy, which we can use to support all of our physiologic processes.